Wednesday week. And you guys, you non-members, are kind of peeking in on a secret meeting that we have every Wednesday night here. We're usually packed, but not this packed. So I'm really, really excited. And the crazy thing is more people are going to roll in. So um, before we get started, I'm going to go through a couple of announcements and reminders for you guys. So first of all, I would like to give a special shout out to our sponsors. The first sponsor is BTS Funding. It's actually a partnership that myself and my partner, Mark Brown, uh, we started this week, we're launching this week. We are a commercial mortgage brokerage. So for all of you investors who are looking to leverage your money and your time and do some hard money loans, please make sure you reach out to us because we have really great lenders and we have really great relationships and we also have great customer service as well and we are investors so we know a lot about investing so we can help you guys out. The other thing about that is we are this week only if you reach out to Mark or myself because you want to start uh, a, the process of getting a loan, you get $500 off of your funding this week. So make sure that you hit us up. And the next sponsor that we have is PHFA, Pennsylvania Housing Financing Finance Agency. They, I'm super thankful for them. They believed in us. They are also a great resource for you guys who are looking to do some development and obviously invest in real estate. So make sure that you go to their website. They have tons and tons of programs that are available to us investors. And also the Better Than Success Real Estate League, the one of the largest real estate clubs in Philadelphia, one of the premier resources. So I wanna have all my members make some noise, raise your hand. Yes, yes, yes. We like a whole Wu-Tang clan out here. <laughs> All right. So I just want to remind you about the remaining events. So this week has gone so, 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 so well. Our Monday events, they were just off the hook. For those of you who came out to golf and social, it was beautiful, it was perfect, it was rooftop, food, real estate, money, city planning, and it was just amazing. Um, Tuesday, we had the home ownership event. They were really, really successful. So, you know, shout out to all of our uh, professionals that help out people getting into their, uh, their home for the first time and everyone that came out who's looking to get into their first home. So those events went really well. And earlier today, we had our women in real estate. All my women in real estate, raise your hand. Yes, y'all showed out today. It was an amazing event. Uh, Councilwoman Blondell Reynolds Brown, she came out and she spoke and we gave her an award and we gave one of our uh, female, our women uh, members an award. It was a really, really great event. It was a packed house in City Hall. So, you know, just to kind of give you guys a reminder, every October, starting last year, so every October going forward, we do an event called the Women in Real Estate Summit. Our first event was packed out. And so, because we wanted to keep that energy going, what we decided to do during Peru is do like a mid-year check-in. Just really, just reignite that fire for us women in real estate because we are a force to be reckoned with. So we had an event earlier today. And now we have, uh, we're, we're gonna go into our event with Ken Weinstein, but tomorrow we have the legalities of real estate. This event is technically sold out. I did release a couple more tickets. It, will, it is on the website and we're gonna have lunch, and we're gonna be talking about some a little more advanced real estate investment strategies. So make sure that you are as VP for that event. Tomorrow night, we have Philly Wealth Builders Summit. This is going to be an amazing event. We have some like really, really superstar real estate developers and investors involved in that. We have Leslie Smallwood Lewis, she is a developer, and we have Lindsay Skinner Pecchio, she's a co-founder of Scout, Aaron Smith. He is from MM Partners, and we have City Councilman Alan Dom. He's also just so happens to be a real estate mogul. So if you are not familiar with Alan Dom, 
please make sure that you Google him and figure out how you can come to that event tomorrow night. It is at the um, Seaport Museum, the Independent Seaport Museum, right on Delaware Avenue. We're going to have food and wine, and it's going to be a really, really sexy event. And the proceeds from that event are going to the German <coughs> and Boys and Girls Club. So please make sure that you are SBP for that ASAP. And then our final event for Philly Real Estate Week is going to be our second annual Wholesalers and Realtors Boot Camp. It is an all-day intensive class or all-day intensive boot camp designed to educate sales professionals. We have the best of the best educating you guys. My partner, Mark Brown. We have Michael Early. We have Tracy Powell, Matt Blank. We have Chris Summers, who is the incoming president of GPAR. And we have Jim Robertson. He's an uh, investor and realtor. And we also have Bart Blatstein. Bart Blatstein. How many of you guys know who Bart Blatstein is? So for those of you who don't know, that was maybe about a third of the room. For those of you who don't know, I, for those of y'all who have been to these events, I've been giving the same speech and I'm not going to change it. <laughs> so y'all know that little area called uh, Northern Liberties? So y'all know how that area did not exist about 15 years ago? He invented it. Yes. So you want to be here for that. He also did a lot of stuff of development in Maniac, and he's also working on Atlantic City. He's probably one of the biggest developers in Philadelphia. You want to make sure that you are at this event. I'm going to do a live podcast recording and interview him at the end of the event. How many of you listen to my podcast? Awesome. So y'all know how I give good interviews. So I'm going to interview him on stage, live, right in front of you guys. So please, make sure you get your tickets to this before they're all sold out. Remember RSVP at phillyrealestateweek.com and remember members get access to all the premium events like the boot camp, which is $89. You get access to it for free. So if you're not a member, you're like, how can I get in there for free? And guess what? We have an amazing special going on for you right now for Philly Real Estate, Philly Real Estate Week only, where the sign-up fee is 75% off. So it comes out to $61.75 to sign up, and then it's $60, $59 a month after that. So if you think about the math, the tickets are $89, but for $61, you can get access to that. So it's cheaper as a sign-up fee to become a member. And then you also get access to the Thursday night event for free as well, because I bought a bunch of tickets for our members and a couple of you guys who are savvy enough to have gotten, who are on our email list and reply back to me and was like, hey, give me that discount code for Thursday night's event. Thank you to you guys. So make sure you whip out your phone if you have the um, the little booklet, it's on that as well, and go to betterthansuccess.com forward slash links, and that's gonna give you access to our membership for 75% off, 75% off. And at the end of all this, I'm gonna tell you guys all about all the amazing things that our membership gives you access to. And um, so yeah, that's just for this week only. So without that, with that being said, oh, please make sure you check out our podcast and make sure you pick up a copy of my book, The Anti-Hustle, that the amazing women in the back of the room, Brianna and Alea, they are selling. <laughs> so mark your calendars. Here's some important events that we have coming up. Um, obviously, Philly Real Estate Week. YB Open, um, this is hosted by YB Connected. They are a group that they support a lot of charity work. Um, they have a big series of summer events. They're having one over at uh, Golf and Social on June 12th, so make sure you get your tickets for that. That's going to be a really good event. They are actually supporting our nonprofit organization, Abundantly Me Academy, which supports young women and we mentor young women. So please make sure that you support that. Um, June 16th, this is a members class, our intensive real estate financing workshop. So you might have some money to do real estate and you're trying to figure out how you can leverage it, how you can get some hard money loans. And the reality is if you have good credit and you might even have the uh, enough money to do the down payment, that's not enough. You need to know how to present well to the lender. So in this class, we're gonna have an intensive class. It's going to we're gonna teach you how to present well and how to position yourself for success in doing a flip. So please make sure you come out to this class. June 23rd, we have a new members class for all you new members who have never come out to the class in person. 
we are going to be we're going to I'm going to teach that class. It's also on the back end of the site. You can watch the video, but if you rather just sit and talk and ask questions, come out to this class and do it once a quarter. Um, June thirtieth, we're going to do our rehab tour. So we're going to go around Jabbar Fairweather. Raise your hand, Jabbar. That guy in the back room. He hosts all of our rehab tours, so he's going to take you around to five, six, seven, eight rehab properties so you can get some hands-on experience and learn. And then June 21st, we're going to do a fun day, and we're going to go to Doherty Park, so make sure that you mark your calendars. I'm all about that Doherty Park trip. Okay, new member highlights. We like to encourage doing business with other members, so here are two members that we're going to highlight this week. Stephanie Smith. Where you at, Steph? Yes, I'm sorry, I've been looking at you all day. <laughs> Steph is an investor. She's a full-time investor and a travel agent. So for all of you wholesalers and realtors out there, if you got deals, make sure you show this woman. She's looking in Germantown, and she's just looking for a good deal all around. She know how to get to the money. She's very, 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 very smart, so please make sure you do business with her. And if you're also traveling and planning a trip, make sure you hit her up, because she can find you some really good deals as well. And, oh, Amir Williams. There's always a typo in this. <laughs> Amir, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't create this. Amir Williams, we have another member named Amir Pop. He's a wholesaler and investor. So if you are an investor and you're looking for a good deal, make sure you hit him up. I'm going to say who to blame. <laughs> make sure you hit him up. What's wrong? Are you going to type it? OK. <laughs> she feels bad, because I specifically said not a mere pot. <laughs> no, no, no. I even showed you his Instagram page. His name is Amir Williams. <laughs> Thank you, Brianna. Brianna's our graphic designer. She's also my right hand. I love her, I love her, I love her to death. And she's also a BTS staff member. So like, so all of the graphic design work that you see, she is responsible for and a bunch of other stuff as well because we're a small business. So she's always doing something that is outside of her job responsibilities. I'm super thankful for her as well as Alea and Askia. So, okay. Make sure you hit Amir up. Where are you, Amir? One of my favorite members. Okay. Okay, sorry. Upcoming speakers for our Wednesday night meetings. We have Nick Mahendansky. He's the founder of Occupies. It's a property management app. So he's coming in next week. Tracy Powell. She's an, she runs an investor-friendly brokerage. Tracy's in here somewhere. Yes. So if you're an investor and you're looking to also get your license, and you're like, ah, oh, there's a lot of restrictions. I don't want to go over there because they're not going to let me do whatever, whatever, whatever. Her brokerage is the place to be because they're investor friendly. Uh, Felicia Walls, where are you, Felicia? She is a business credit specialist, so she's going to be talking about business credit, so make sure you come out to this. Fourth of July, no meeting. I don't want to see y'all. I want y'all to be looking at chicken. <laughs> and then we have Matt Heller. He is an account executive at, he's an account, he's, a, he's an investor as well. And then we have Danielle White. She's a realtor. She's also a specialist in the uh, share of sales. So she's going to be talking about that as well. Without further ado, I would like to bring the man of the hour to the stage, Mr. Ken Weinstein, the man that we've all been waiting to hear with you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, sir. I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, Nicole, and thanks to you and your team. I'm blown away by this welcome tonight and the energy in the room. This is awesome. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, we're going to talk about a bunch of stuff tonight, uh, but I also want to allow time for some Q&A, because uh, I always find uh, it's great to listen to me. Uh, jabber on for a while, but I think it's much more interesting to hear what you want to hear. So uh, I want to allow some time for questions and answer. Uh, first, I want to introduce 
Uh, one of my staffers who came with me tonight, Jawan Ford, who's my director of leasing. Jawan does a great job for us. If you want to know and understand leasing and marketing, you should definitely chat with her. And she's uh, one of the people who speaks in our Jumpstart Germantown class. Um, so, uh, thanks again for having me. Um, I did not know anything about this group, to be honest, and did not know about the first annual Philly Real Estate Week when I was asked to speak. And I'm glad I said yes, because it's everywhere. Um, I think it's been a tremendous success that everything has filled up and sold out and the energy level is high. And yeah, it says a lot about the team, Nicole and everyone else who put this on, but it also says a lot about Philadelphia and real estate, um, that we have matured to a point now where these kind of things can happen and flourish and not just a bunch of white males get together in a room and uh, say, hey, we're the, we're the investors, we're the developers. Um, we have grown past that, and this is really proof of that, and it's awesome. So thank you for, for being here. Um, it's going to be a little awkward with uh, my papers, but I, I do want to look at my notes. Um, so what I'm going to talk about is doing well by doing good tonight. Uh, and, and, and as I talk about it, you'll understand better what I'm talking about. A lot of people in this room want to make money in real estate, and that's cool. But there is also another point on why to get into real estate. And it's something that I have thrived on over the last 29 years, not just making money and doing well and supporting my family and creating a nest egg and sending my kids to college and going on vacations and all that good stuff, but at the same time, you can do well by the neighborhood. You can do well by your neighbors. You can do well by your community and your city and your state and your country. And that's, I'm hoping to show you another way. Some people are already down that path, but there's no reason why you can't do both at the same time. Um, it's, it's been a tremendous day for me already. Um, I woke up this morning and found out uh, that the diner I bought in Connecticut is sitting on a trailer and ready to come down to Wayne Junction, and we're going to have a new diner in Wayne Junction. And then I went to a zoning meeting at 9.30 this morning and got variances on three properties, and that was pretty cool, something we've been working uh, on for a while, and we'll talk more about that in a sec. And then coming here tonight. And, and just seeing the energy in the room and people enthusiastic about getting into real estate development. Oh, thank you very much for this. So how I got started. Uh, let me first uh, quickly go into my background. Um, I'm the president of Philly Office Retail. We are real estate developers. I've been developing almost 30 years. And specifically what Philly Office Retail does is buys and rehabs and leases out vacant commercial properties. So for lack of better word, we're buying junk and we're trying to do adaptive reuse and make it into something better. Uh, there's a lot of other types of real estate we could be doing, a lot of other types of real estate you could be doing, but that's my path. And as I said to somebody earlier, we all have different paths. My path is not your path. Um, you know, everyone has their own path on how they go through real estate. Um, I wear also a lot of other hats. I own uh, two, soon to be three restaurants, Trolley Car Diner in Mount Airy, Trolley Car Cafe in East Falls, and at the end of July we're opening up Trolley Car Station in University City at 40th and Baltimore. How many people have been to a trolley car? You guys are awesome. Thank you. <laughs> I love this group. <laughs> Um, so uh, uh, we'll get the restaurant thing out of the way. Don't go into the restaurant business, okay? <laughs> We're done with that. Um, I uh, am one of the founders, original founders of Valley Green Bank in Mount Airy. Uh, and that was really eye-opening for me because I had never been in the banking business. 
Um, it shows you what a novice can do. Um, but I sat on the Valley Green Bank board for eight years, sat on the loan committee for eight years before we eventually sold to Univest and did very well with that sale. Um, but real proud of what we were able to do over eight years because we invested in a lot of community projects as a community bank. But that was also key for me in my learning process because I never understood bankers. They would sit on the other side of the table and they would tell me, oh Ken, I can't do your deal because of this or because of this or I need this information from you. I had no idea what they were talking about. And then when I got involved with Valley Green Bank, I realized that they that the regulators standing behind them, the government regulators, were just their ventriloquists. You know, they were telling them what they had to say, and I had no idea. So now it's fascinating, now that I know banking, what it's like to talk to bankers and negotiate deals, because all I had to say now is, oh yeah, I used to sit on the board of Valley Green Bank, I was one of the owners, and all of a sudden you get this instant respect. It's really interesting how it, how it changes very quickly. Um, I chair the board of uh, PHDC, Philadelphia Housing Development Corporation. Uh, I'm a mayoral appointee, uh, both Nutter and uh, Jim Kenney appointed me to chair the board. And that's key because we spend about 30, 40 million dollars a year keeping low moderate income people in their homes. I mean, it sounds great, right? That's, that's good, we should be doing that. But that's key to anti-gentrification. Because as we're developing, uh, there's no doubt that we're raising property values that some people are being displaced, and you gotta be aware of that. Anybody who says that you can develop a neighborhood without gentrification is lying, okay? The question becomes, how do you develop a neighborhood while keeping gentrification at bay? And groups like PHDC spending that kind of money is one of the ways of doing that because we can keep, by fixing somebody's roof, by fixing their heater, before it goes bad, we can keep people in their homes and, and, and help to uh, not have as much displacement when the rest of us are renovating in the neighborhood. Um, I chair, I founded the Mannery Business Improvement District uh, 11 years ago. I've chaired the board ever since. Still looking for somebody to take over as chair, if anyone's in Mount Airy and interested. Um, but that's been key because it's taught me commercial corridors and why they're so important, how to improve them. Mount Airy has come a long way in, in 11 years. Um, and, and, and so I'm trying to spread that information, that energy, that knowledge to other business uh, districts that could learn from that. Uh, one of the cool things I've done is uh, for, for seven years I've mentored NFL players. I did it through the Warden program, and, and that's key for me. We, we would do 35 players a year. It's a very competitive program to get accepted to, and I would spend an hour and a half with them talking real estate. We'd have dinner for another hour and a half. Some of them would come back and, and uh, shadow me uh, to learn more about real estate. What the NFL was trying to do, because uh, they're trying to stay ahead of the game, is a lot of people would retire and they had squandered all of their investment money. Uh, friends would say, hey, give me you know, a million dollars for this, and of course that disappears. So they were trying to get ahead of the game, help them invest. And what I realized there, first of all, I had never done formal mentoring before that, so that was really helpful, and really helped me start Jumpstart Germantown. Um, but the other thing that's key that you should know is it doesn't matter whether you have $5 in the bank or $5 million in the bank, like maybe some of these players, you still start in residential real estate with a single family house, you screw up, you lose money, and you move on. And you know a lot of these players are like, oh, well, I got a million dollars, I'm gonna buy a strip shopping center. Well, that's a million dollars they're about to lose because they have no clue what they're doing. Right. So they should be starting right where everyone in this room should be starting or already has started. Uh, and that's where I've started too. Um, how did I get started? That's always one of the big questions. Uh, it happens to be a question here. Um, is, uh, I was living in Fishtown at the time, not too far from here. Fishtown was a very different place back then. It was a little, little, little scary. Um, and this is late 80s. 
But I had this landlady, Marilyn Pitt, who still lives in the neighborhood. And with her own two hands, she bought and renovated six rental properties. And I thought, how cool is that? I was the least handy person you could imagine. I knew nothing about construction. I couldn't lift a hammer. I couldn't do any of that stuff. And, but I thought, how cool, if I could do what Marilyn's doing, I could make the community better and I could invest money. Um, so I looked around the city and uh, picked Germantown and, and actually East Mount Airy as my original investment things. Uh, fortunately and unfortunately, the reasons I picked Germantown are still the reasons today that it's a great investment. Uh, so I, none of that has changed. I, as I said before, I started in residential, which is where everyone should start. I didn't move to commercial until probably 10 years in. Uh, like I said, I've been developing about 30 years. Um, and I also, by the way, did not go full time until 15 years in. So um, I took my time. I accumulated 125 properties, I think, before I went full time and just did it evenings and weekends. I was working in city council. I was working in the restaurant business. Um, so you know, you can be patient. You can take your time. Every, again, everyone has their own path. Some people are ready in year one to go full time. For me, it took 15 years. Uh, and then I didn't have staff until 12 years ago, and now we have 20 staff at Philly Office Retail. Um, but I hired very slowly. Uh, we're gonna get into that in, in, in a few minutes. Um, one of the things I wanted to share with you, an early goal, uh, is you talk about cash flow versus appreciation. And I want you to be really careful with this because especially in an economy like this, people are so tempted and so assuming that property values will just keep going up and up and up. Who thinks that? Who thinks that you know, property values will just keep going? Okay. There's always one. <laughs> um, it doesn't work that way. They eventually go down. Now, we don't know when that's going to be. Could be three months from now. I hate to alarm you. Uh, could be three years from now. Could be five years from now. We don't know when that's going to be, but the gravy train is going to stop eventually. What is the lesson from that? I got into real estate development in the late 80s. There was a mini recession, 86, 87. I saw property values drop 30%. I saw a lot of early colleagues go out of business. The lesson I learned, and that was nothing compared to the 07, 08 recession, right? But I learned early on that you've got to focus on cash flow and not appreciation. Not Nothing wrong with balancing the two, but what I'm telling you, if you just focus on uh, appreciation and you assume that prices will just keep going up and up and up, then eventually you're going to get burned and you're going to lose everything. I guarantee it. You'll get stuck with five properties, uh, pro and values can come down 30, 40%. Of course, if you're investing in the hottest neighborhoods where prices are up 40, 50%, they're gonna drop 30, 40%, right? If you're investing in the middle neighborhoods and prices are only up 10%, right? It doesn't sound great, but then they're only gonna go down 10%. So just think about it. Um, and what we teach in Jumpstart Germantown is focus on the cash flow, uh, not the appreciation, but at the very least, balancing the two, okay? So I just want to share that with you. Um, but in terms of my background, one of the things I'm most proud of uh, is starting Jumpstart Germantown three years ago. Uh, I'll get more into that in a few minutes, how that happened. Uh, how many of you heard of Jumpstart Germantown? Great, so we got word out. Um, so let me run through, real quick, uh, impactful projects. This is not a talk I've given before, uh, but we put some slides together. Um, we currently have uh, about 350 commercial tenants. Actually, about 30 of those are residential. The rest are commercial tenants. Everything from 30,000 square foot offices all the way down to uh, 500 square foot train station coffee shop. Uh, so we have everything in between. This is one of these projects that you choose not because it makes money as much. The cash flow is, it actually it's turned out to be much better than we expected. Uh, but 
you pick one of these projects because it was a vacant, deteriorated uh, train station in the middle of the neighborhood, and this is in uh, West Mount Airy. And we uh, leased this from SEPTA 19 years ago. I happen to know that because our 20-year lease is up next year. Uh, but sometimes you pick projects that are more interesting, more challenging, because of the impact that you're going to have. Now that being said, like I, like I alluded to, the cash flow on this has been better than we ever expected. But sometimes you got to get creative. Everyone else walked away from this potential deal because I can't own this property, I'm not interested. I can't finance this property, no. We bid on this property, there's two bidders. One was a hair salon and one was us. The hair salon bid $400 a month uh, to set them. We bid $410 a month. It almost, I was embarrassed. It almost looked like it was a setup, you know, that, that Ken has somehow knew their number, and I swear I didn't know the number. But you always bid, for those of you who are bidding on stuff, you always bid $10 more, $20 more, you know, a couple hundred dollars more, whatever. Um, but that's what we did, and that's how we got it. We spent $60,000 renovating this property uh, into a two-bedroom apartment and a coffee shop. And we've had incredible cash flow, roughly 30% ROI uh, over the last 19 years. So sometimes you just gotta be creative and look for something different. Um, this is a property at 4811 Germantown Avenue, eight acre property. Uh, originally had five buildings on it. We knocked one of the buildings down. Uh, the only building I've ever knocked down in 29 years. Had a little cry over it, I was okay. Um, but the other four buildings were historic. It was all vacant. It was the former Germantown Settlement Charter School campus, about 30,000 square feet. We made it into an office building, an adult daycare, a catering hall, and a residential facility. Uh, incredible cash flow. Again, this is where you gotta be creative. I go to an auction, I bid, I'm the third bidder, right? Sometimes you gotta be patient. Uh, I'm the third bidder on this property. First two bidders disappear, uh, lose their deposits. They call me and say, still wanna buy it? I said, yeah, my number. They said, okay, so we bought the lien, we foreclosed on the lien, and then we spent a couple million dollars renovating the property. Since then, needless to say, we have taken all the cash out of there by refinancing, and we still have an incredible cash flow. Um, so until my current Wayne Junction project, this was my biggest project to date. Uh, one and a half acre St. Peter's Church campus, which is now a Waldorf school, had been vacant for 10 years. Uh, roughly 30,000 square feet, historic. We got historic tax credits on it, which is always challenging, but it worked out in this case. Um, again, you gotta be creative. How do you lower your risk while doing development? You can't just always go straight ahead and say, hey, let me rehab this, and uh, hopefully the tenant will come, or let me rehab this, and I have a tenant in hand, and if I have cost overruns, it's my problem. No. This was like an unknown project, so I did two things. One is, I purchased the property contingent on signing a lease with the tenant. Of course, I knew who the tenant was gonna be, so I said, give me two weeks to either sign a lease with Waldorf School or not sign a lease, and they said, sure, two weeks, yeah, we can wait. Um, and then the second thing I did, I signed a creative lease with the tenant. I said, here's your base rent. If we spend, I forget the number, but $3.7 million buying and renovating this property, your rent will be X. For every dollar we go over that $3.7 million, your rent will go up by Y dollars. So what did I just do? I did two things. One is I made them my partner, right, in a very creative way. Now we're jointly making decisions on how to rehab it, what the finishes should be, all that kind of stuff. Second thing is, I just took cost for overruns off of me. Because if we go way over, and we did, uh, we went way over, um, they have to pay a higher rent. Of course, they become a more risky tenant. 
but it turned out wonderful. They have, there's 225 really lucky kids that go, get to go to school here every day. It's just a gorgeous campus. Um, so just think about it. It's, you know, this is a yet another example of a win-win-win. Uh, we won, the tenant won, we have a great return from this property, and the neighborhood won. It's amazing, the second we announced this project, people started buying up houses. There was nothing vacant uh, around uh, this campus anymore uh, because people are looking, you guys are looking, right? You're paying attention to what are the big developments going into a community. So one of the things I can do for a community and bigger developments like this is get jumpstart the communities. And that's what this project did. Uh, this was a cool project, the walks at Kendrick Mills, roughly 25,000 square feet, uh, currently 32 commercial tenants. Um, we found out from a bank that the last owner was going under. The bank didn't want to take ownership, um, so they were looking for a real quick sale. They were so anxious to sell it to me that they lined up a loan with another bank for me, which was really cool. They didn't, they didn't, they already had enough. They already lost their shirt on that. They didn't want to hold my, my loan again. Uh, so we then spent about $350,000 bringing it up to code. Uh, it was about 50% occupied when we bought it. Uh, again, now 23 tenants in there, 100% occupied, great cash flow. We've already refinanced it, got all of our cash out again. Um, so you'll, you'll hear that over and over again. That's, that's your goal, right? Um, the Burr Method. Um, so this is Earth. How many of you recognize this? Earth Bread and Brewery in Mount Airy? Yeah, a great uh, flatbread pizza. This was a nuisance bar. This one we did for the neighborhood. Uh, because there was a, a bar called Anglesey Pub in there. Um, lots of liquor license infractions, serving people after 2 a.m. Uh, a lot of uh, college students would hang there underage. Um, it, it, was, it, was, it was pretty gruesome. And uh, so we bought it, it took us two and a half years to get the tenant out of there. Um, but then we spent a couple hundred thousand renovating it, per, put Earth Bread and Brewery in there, and we have refinanced this several times already. So we've gotten cash out uh, every five years uh, that we've owned it, and uh, they've been a wonderful tenant. Uh, they opened up a second restaurant in Fairmount. Um, but this is typical of the Mount Airy revitalization. Uh, we have renovated 12 properties along Germantown Avenue, um, starting in 1996 when I bought Cresham Cottage Cafe at Gowan Avenue. Uh, that was my first commercial property. And then we just started buying junk on the avenue that needed to be upgraded, needed to be renovated, needed to have better tenants. We specifically looked for food tenants because that was, to me, the easiest way of upgrading the area. And, and um, we, uh, the, the uh, yeah, so, <laughs> believe that. Um, so what's coming up, 2018 projects. We have so much on our plate right now, it's so exciting. Like I said, I was at zoning this morning. I've never gotten more than one variance at zoning at a time, and this morning we did three, so that was pretty cool. Uh, I know we have some people here who are at zoning this morning. Who is here, who is at, uh, cool, thanks for being there. Yeah. Um, this is 133 Berkeley Street. This is where my Wing Junction Diner is going to go. I am not going to operate it because I'm done uh, opening restaurants, okay? Um, so we are going to put the diner right on the front here. We're going to put 40 parking spots in the rear of it. Uh, this was a factory building. Uh, city knocked it down about five years ago. Uh, this is what I'm trying to prevent in the rest of Wayne Junction. We're trying to save the properties there. Uh, no doubt there's more money in knocking the properties down and building new. I could revitalize the area doing that, but that's not what the neighborhood wants and that's not what this, this Wayne Junction area wants. Uh, so we're gonna try to save the old factory buildings, reuse them, and over time, that's gonna be appreciated because we're keeping the fabric of the community intact. 
So this is 133 uh, Berkeley Street. Uh, next door to this uh, 16,000 square foot building, uh, we're going to put Attic Brewing over here. We're going to put Deke's Barbecue over on this side. They're each going to occupy roughly 6,000 square feet. And in the front building, we just signed a lease with a for-profit office tenant who's going to take 4,000 square feet. And we just started renovating that. So a year from now, uh, this is all going to be done. And Wayne Junction is going to be a very different place. So we're really excited. Um, next door to this, those trees are actually now gone. Uh, those are all junk trees, so don't get too sad. Uh, but those trees are all gone. Why? Because it's 147 Berkeley Street. We took the owner of this property to court for a conservatorship. How many of you know what conservatorship is? Okay, not too many, but something you might want to look into in the future. It's state legislation that allows you to petition the court to take a vacant, deteriorated property away from an owner and do the right thing with it. You know, I'm all about property rights, okay? I have a lot of property. I understand property rights. I appreciate property rights. But people have, property owners have no right to leave their property vacant and deteriorated. It's the first time I've gone to court for a conservatorship. Usually, you can talk to owners and say, hey, you know, do you want to sell? I want to buy. Your property's vacant. I would like to do something better with it. They didn't want to talk to me. So we had no choice. We filed for a conservatorship. Um, the day after we went to court, they removed all these trees. They took out uh, a vacant bus that was there. They resecured their property. Um, we're going back to court without getting into all the uh, little pieces of it. Um, it's like a chess game. They, they did something, we did something to counter that. They did something, we just called the historic commission and now they can't demo their property. Um, so we're going back to court and hopefully the court will name us as the conservator at the end of this month. Um, this is one of the properties that we took to uh, uh, zoning board this morning and got approval for 32 apartments. This has been, thank you. Thank you. Um, this is gonna be wonderful a year from now. Um, this is the Max Levy building, built in 1902, uh, really cool industrial building. Uh, they don't build them like this anymore. Uh, Max Levy moved out of this building roughly 15 years ago, uh, built a new facility in the far northeast, and uh, this has been sitting ever since. It's owned I-2 Industrial. We couldn't find an industrial tenant to go in. So we went with Plan B, which was the 32 apartments. Uh, and this one will receive historic tax credits also. Uh, so that'll be a piece of it. Um, here's the front of, of it. And then here's a, a mock-up of what it's going to look like when it's done. It's going to be very cool. Uh, trying to keep apartments affordable. Here's another thing. Again, I mentioned being creative. If you want to do right by the community, but also keep an eye on your bottom line because you've got to make money, right? If you don't make money, you can't get financing. So you've got to find this balance. Um, so don't, don't, don't get me wrong. Don't think, oh, Ken just does right by the community. doesn't matter what the pro forma looks like. No. We start with the pro forma. We look at the pro forma. We make sure the return is there. And then if we can also do right by the community at the same time, then great. Now, we have some properties that... Um, our home runs, big returns, right? And then we have some properties that balance those that, you know, only get a 5% return, but it's going to be a home run for the community. So we do some of that balancing. But when you're getting started, you need to make sure that your ROI is enough that banks are going to lend to you. So um, to go back to this property, I uh, lost my, oh, so one of the, again, sometimes you got to get creative. So I want to keep rents at a reasonable number. Um, so we're trying to keep rents at 625 to 1100 here, right? Reasonable? Um, we, can, we can charge more, I have no doubt. Of course, if I charge more, my risk goes up. Because what happens when 
the economy comes down, and all of a sudden University City housing ends up at 1600 but I'm charging 1600 here. They're going to live in University City. So I'm aware of that, okay? So I'm trying to keep my risk down. So what I'm going to do, or what I've already done, is I'm going to a couple foundations, uh, family foundations, and I'm saying, hey, you want, to, you want affordable housing. Here's a way that you, if you can guarantee my loan and bring my interest rates down to 2 or 3% instead of 5 or 6%, I can charge a more reasonable rent than if I go out and, and get a 5 or 6% loan, where now I gotta charge 800 to 1400, just making it up. Um, so sometimes you gotta get a creative, right, to do the right thing. So it's not gonna change my bottom line, but it's gonna help the community and it's gonna lower my risk. Um, this is the Shaper School at 4701 Germantown Avenue. Uh, this is where we're going to be moving my new offices, which I'm really excited about. And uh, we are not wasting any time. We're going to get building permits on Friday. Uh, we also got zoning variants for this this morning. 10,000 square foot former school building, last used as a church, been vacant seven, eight years, something like that. Um, we're going to put our offices on the third floor, and we're going to put Jumpstart Germantown co-working space on the first and second floor. Uh, you'll definitely be hearing more of that because I'm hoping some people in this room will want to park themselves there uh, because there's going to be great synergy going on, great energy going on uh, so that people can work out of this building, um, get to know each other, work together, and use that to remove blight around Philadelphia. So I'm really excited about this project. Um, the last project that we got approved this morning is uh, 5423, the old Cunningham Piano showroom building uh, in Germantown. Uh, the uh, big question was parking, you know, as, as it is very, very often in, in zoning matters. So what we were able to do is sort of scour the neighborhood, because you gotta listen to the neighbors, right? You can't just say, ah, oh, moving full steam ahead, you know, if they don't think there's enough parking, screw them. No, you can't have that attitude. You gotta appreciate the zoning process. And I learned that, by the way, early on. I was chief of staff to a city councilwoman. So I was on the other side of zoning very often from developers, and it gave me an appreciation of the zoning process. So for any of you who are going through zoning, don't fight it. You know, work with the neighbors, talk to them, figure out what they want, and try to satisfy their concerns, because they're the ones living there, so you better do that. So what we were able to do was, I found five parking spaces that were gonna rent from historic Germantown, and the other way I was able to free up eight parking spaces that I had in a lot. So we were able to put 13 parking spaces together we're making this into 16 apartments and two storefronts on the first floor. So we'll be starting that later this year also. Uh, I think it's the last one. Um, Mount Airy Presbyterian Church. We picked up this property a couple years ago uh, in the middle of Mount Airy. And again, a great win-win because we didn't have to ask the church to leave. So again, this is where you gotta get creative. We gave, the church has been dwindling in numbers, okay, like a lot of churches. So we knew they could not afford a big rent, but they have 8,000 square feet, 4,000 in the sanctuary, 4,000 in the lower level, and we knew they couldn't afford enough rent. So we said, what if we give you a below market rent, and in exchange, you lower the price on the building, but we'll give you a long-term lease. Um, they said, great. So what that did was it allowed us, we have, of course, a cash flow loss for the next 10 years, but it freed up the other 25,000 square feet in the building. And next week, we're breaking ground on 19 condo units that we will sell. Um, so I'm really excited about this project. 
So again, you gotta get creative sometimes because everyone else was coming at it and saying, oh, I'll give you a million dollars for your property, I'll give you 900. Those are nice numbers, but the church didn't wanna leave. They weren't listening to the church. So I forget what we actually paid, it was somewhere around 450. Um, and uh, which is a steal, except that we made their dreams come true, which is to stay in their home longer term. So here's a uh, picture of the side, that'll be an entrance to the condo units. And then here's uh, a, a visual of what it's gonna look like. The other thing I did, by the way, you gotta know what you don't know. I don't know anything about condos. And I definitely don't know anything about condos in Mount Air. So what did I do? I called the only person who has sold condos in Mount Airy, and I said we should partner on this project. So I gave him 50%. Uh, he's going to be the general contractor on the project. But what did he do? He did things I would have never thought of. He said, let me build four penthouse units on the top. Um, and we took it through zoning. We got approval. And it's going to be a much better project because I took on a partner. So don't be afraid to take on partners. It helps you do a lot more. Are we okay time-wise, or? Yeah, you all okay? Yeah. 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 Okay. I want to make sure. Oh, man. And throw it on again. Okay. Um, so anyway, that's what's possible with real estate. That's what gets me going. You can tell I'm a little excited. You can see it a little warm here. Um, but philosophy and mission. Um, and this permeates through my business, Philly Office Retail, but it also permeates through Jumpstart Germantown. That's why we started Jumpstart. Doing well by doing good. And these are things for the, how many of you have been through Jumpstart Germantown? Awesome, a few people, good. Um, so this will all be a review for you because these are things that we talk about in Jumpstart. Uh, improving your community. This is my passion, re reducing blight. You know, everyone has their passion, you should follow your passion, but for me, nobody should have to live next to a vacant, deteriorated property. Um, and I'm gonna do everything I can to make sure that there is less blight than ever. And also, I always say, as sort of a side uh, benefit of reducing blight is I get to retire when every building in Philadelphia has been renovated, so I'm looking forward to that one day. You guys are gonna help me. Uh, thank you. Um, so improving your community, reducing blight, growing the pie, sharing resources, and this is exactly what we're doing in this room tonight. Um, when I started Jumpstart Germantown, I felt like there was very little sharing going on in the real estate world, and I'm definitely seeing more of this going on now, in just three short years, but I call it the 80-20 rule. 80% of all people in real estate don't talk about what they do. And this includes a lot of friends of mine, okay? You don't talk real estate. You talk about the weather, you talk about your family, you know. You don't, you don't, you don't share, you don't talk about real estate. The other 20% of us, and I would include everyone in this room, we're sharing. We realize that you can do more if you share resources, share information, uh, that you don't have to fight over a piece of the pie, you can grow the pie. Okay, there's more than enough work for all of us. And I'm a true believer in that. So, uh, and that's what Jumpstart Germantown really is very much about. Uh, gaining community support, marketing advantage, being a good neighbor. Again, we get into this much more detail in Jumpstart Germantown, but work with your neighbors. It's not just an obligation. Oh man, I gotta talk to the neighbors. I gotta... No, the neighbors are the eyes and ears on your property. The neighbors want to choose their own neighbor, so they're your marketing arm, right? So when you have a property for rent, when you want to sell a property, you tell the neighbors first. When you're buying a property, you go door to door, you knock on doors, you leave your card if they're not there. Why? Because they live there. And when someone broke, breaks into your property, they call you. When a contractor goes away, and is doing something really stupid and fumes are coming out of your property, they call you because before they call L and I, right? So they're your eyes and ears. Um, I don't know how many stories I've heard over time of people not doing that 
And then, of course, neighbors have no other choice but to call L and I. I would do that. Um, investing in your future, creating a nest egg. I told you initially, don't overlook this. You know, there's nothing wrong with creating profit. It's profit that we live in a capitalist country. Um, it's profit that helps you borrow money. The banks will not lend you money. I had a decision early on whether to be a nonprofit or a for profit. Um, and I made the right decision. I've had nonprofits say to me, yeah, you went the right way. Why? Because nonprofits have to fight over funding. For profits, within reason, have unlimited funding. There are always banks that will lend you money if you uh, prove yourself to them, if your pro forma works, you know, and so on. So um, don't be ashamed of creating nest egg. You should make profit, and that's why you should do this. And then last but not least, promoting diversity in real estate development. We started with that. I've been really proud that over 85% of our graduates in Jumpstart Germantown have been women and or African Americans. And it hit me early on when I was in a commercial real estate meeting, and literally the room was 95% white male. And yes, I'm starting people off in residential, but my hope is 5, 10, 15 years from now, that room will look very different and should look very different. So. Um, what you need to succeed, be a sponge, right? Who, who here is a sponge? Doug. He's a friend. Okay. Oh, Doug, yeah. Everyone knows Doug. Oh, my God. Doug, Doug Defty, everyone. Um, and his wife, his wonderful wife. Um, Doug uh, went through an early Jumpstart program, uh, has done several loans with us. He's really a rock star, um, has really taken off quit his job about six months ago, and it went full time. Uh, and a number of Jumpstart people have done that, which is pretty cool. So be a sponge, keep learning. You know, I tell staff, uh, I, I remember telling Juwan this, um, when you come to work for me, the day you stop learning is the day you should leave my office. I'm in a 29 years, I'm learning every day. You know, there are tons of things I went through today that I've never done before. And that's pretty exciting. I mean, I guess if you're, you know, you work for Toll Brothers and you're doing little cookie cutter houses, I don't mean to put it down, but I just, <laughs> um, you know, maybe it gets a little old after a while. But if you're renovating houses in urban areas, there is something new every day, and you just keep learning. So never stop learning, keep absorbing, be a sponge. Be willing to take risks. We talk in Jumpstart Germantown a lot about risk because it's all about risk, right? And it's what stops people from in investing. So I'll be honest with you, more than half the people who go through Jumpstart Germantown will never be developers. Why? The biggest reason why, you know, life circumstances, lack of initial money, lack of time, you know, all those kind of things. But the number one reason is they can't stomach the risk. And that's okay. I'm not making judgments on anyone. I tell the NFL players this, you guys have already graduated in a way, right? You're here because you can accept risk or you believe you can accept risk. The NFL players, when I used to mentor them, I'll never forget this one lineman, I think he played for Kansas City, he raises his hand in the middle of my presentation. He says, how do you sleep at night? I said, what do you mean? What did I do wrong? You know? So how do you sleep at night? How do you sign loan documents and, and go to sleep at night? I said, you shouldn't go into real estate. You know, you know, go find a good money manager, go hit the real estate, hit the, uh, hit the stock market, don't go into real estate. So risk is a big thing and you gotta understand it because if you don't understand it, you also don't know how to reduce it. And you don't know how to line up your ROI with your risk. Meaning if you're investing in Center City and your risk is lower, you should expect a lower return. If you're in a middle neighborhood and your risk is here, you should expect a higher return. So you have to have that basic understanding. So we spend a lot of our time in Philly office retail. We don't necessarily call it risk every day, but we spend a lot of our time figuring out how to reduce risk. How do you find an environmental consultant um, who can quantify 
the costs of remediation. Because once I identify the cost of remediation, I just lowered my risk, right? As opposed to open-ended. Now I'm not going to spend $5,000 on that consultant. I'll, 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 I'll win it, right? Now your risk is up here, right? So you spend the $5,000, you bring your risk down. So it's all about risk. Uh, embody these qualities. We talk a lot about this. It's not the only qualities um, that you want, but know yourself. Know which of these qualities you have, which ones you should have, um, and which ones you're not good at and need to improve. Um, I was in the car today with a gentleman who was going to go through Jumpstart. I don't know if he's here tonight. He was going to try to make it. There you are. Can I use you for example? Okay, thank you. So this gentleman, he's got great instincts. You know, he really, he has it. He stalked me after the variance meeting today, after the zoning meeting, and he followed me back to my car, and <laughs> he's going to be sorry I you that day. Now, you know what, and I told you on this earlier, this is my guy, because this is what you should be doing. He has great instincts. I'm going to go to the zoning meeting. I know Ken's going to be there. I'm going to follow him back to his car, ask for a ride to my car, so that he can get to the ministry. But he shared with me, if I can share with everyone, that he's not as strong with email and, and writing. Does that mean he should walk away from it? No, he needs to practice that. But he's got something really positive that most of us don't have and this incredible instinct. Um, and he is weaker over here, so he just has to acknowledge that, and he has to decide what he's gonna do about that. So figure out what's good. Uh, I have incredible fire in the belly. That's what I have. I feel in the middle of the winter, I'm burning up, because I got something inside here. Sounds silly. I finally met a woman at my last Jumpstart session. That there you are. I forgot you were here. She's got fire in the belly. I, it's the first person. I was like, someone finally understands me. You know, my wife thinks I'm nuts. You know. <laughs> um, anyway, so everyone has different uh, parts of this, but these are the qualities you should have. Okay. Uh, and last but not least, get going. It's on you. Okay. As we like to say in Jumpstart, and I'm not one of those self-help type people, um, but you know what? We're giving you the experience that you need. We're giving you the mentor you need. We're giving you 85% loan-to-cost funding that you need. And if you don't get it done, yeah, there might be other reasons why you're not getting it done. But now it's on you. No one else is doing it for you. So just get going. Start doing it. Uh, the first property is the hardest. How many of you have not done any properties yet? OK, great. First one's the hardest, OK? And, and once you do the first one, it gets going. It starts rolling. You know, the sourcing properties is by far the hardest, but you gotta get going. You gotta take a chance, you gotta take a risk. Jumpstart Germantown. By the way, there's these cool bags here, and in those bags is a Philly office retail a card holder. Yeah, show me your card holders. <laughs> Jawan, thanks for ordering these. These are awesome. Um, anyway, Jumpstart Germantown. I think I got off subject. Um, so I started Jumpstart Germantown three years ago. Uh, why? Because you know, we all want to give back, right? That's a natural progression, you know? I had a lot of good mentors over time that have helped me, and I want to return that favor. Um, but more so, it was practical, because people were coming to me, emailing, calling, would you sit down with me for an hour, tell me how you got started, I'd like to be like you someday. You know, that's nice, that's great. But what was I doing? I was sitting with people half an hour, an hour, I felt like a cheerleader. I had my pom-poms out. And I was like, I did it, you can do it too, this is awesome. You know, I wasn't helping anyone. I'm not teaching real estate uh, development in one hour. I'm just encouraging them, uh, which is not enough. 
So, and it was starting to get heavier and heavier. I'm getting five, 10 calls a week. You know, I'm thinking, wow, if I'm sitting with everyone for an hour, it's going to start taking some time away. So, um, the final straw was I was at a community meeting that didn't go very well. Okay, sometimes they don't go well. Um, and two people who I didn't know, who didn't know each other, came up to me after the meeting and said, Ken, you know, love what you do. Can you show me? Can you teach me? I said, you know what? Let's, let's get this thing going. Let's sit with me for three hours and let me run through a, 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 sort of a, a basic curriculum in real estate development. And let me start to show you what to do. Instead of just giving you this one hour pep talk, let me actually start to show you. The three hours became nine hours, which now has become 10 hours. Um, and both of them, by the way, went into real estate development. Uh, Nancy Deephouse, Bruce McCall, if anyone knows them. Um, and that's how we got started. Uh, you know, and, and, and it was primitive at first. We had, first I had the two of them, and then I had classes of 10, and then we had classes of 20, and now we just went to classes of 60. Uh, we have incredible demand, um, and but that's how it progressed. Uh, we, it, it's blown me away how much interest there is, how much impact we've been, been able to have in three years. Um, we have already had 343 people graduate through our program as of a couple Wednesdays ago. Um, we have 730 applications, so we still have a waiting list of about a year, year and a half. Um, we've done $8.6 million in loans, and we've done 83 loans in two and a half years. Uh, so it's pretty cool stuff. Uh, we've gotten a lot of press, which has really helped us. I think we were in the Inquirer three times, uh, so we've never had to recruit people. Uh, people just come to us at this point. Um, and like I said to you, everyone should start in, in residential, so that's what we're teaching. So here are the three initiatives, the training program, the developers network and the loan program. I'm going to run through each each of these quickly. Uh, the training program, like I said, uh, that many applications, actually 730 as of this morning. Um, we're doing four sessions a year. We do them on Wednesday afternoons from two to five. Uh, it, and each session is four weeks, uh, a total of 10 hours. Uh, during the third session, we take you to a construction site somewhere in the city, and we run you through construction. It takes about an hour and a half. Uh, we, uh, like I said, we have about 60 developers in each of the sessions. And then at the end of the 10 hours of training, we assign you to a mentor. So we have 19 mentors in the program. Uh, they give freely of their time. Some of the mentors are also uh, teachers in the program because we have a lot of guests come in and talk to you. We have my attorney comes in uh, and talks to you about setting up an LLC and liability issues. Have someone talk about zoning. Uh, Juan comes in and talks about leasing and marketing. Uh, my in-house architect comes in and talks about design and permits. Uh, have uh, Bill Pounds from um, Republic Bank comes in and talks about uh, lending, although maybe we should change that. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, please do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's talk about that, September. Yes. Uh, so, because no one wants to hear me talk for 10 hours, yeah, I hear say a lot of yeses. Yeah. Um, so we have a lot of guests that know a lot more than I do on these subjects, which is pretty cool. Um, this is what we're teaching, the seven jump steps of real estate development. Um, I was saying to somebody earlier, some people have a good grasp on two or three or four of these. You need all seven of these. You can't skip due diligence. You can't skip design and permits. You just can't skip this stuff, but people do because they don't have enough information about them. So we're running through all these subjects and you really need to have a baseline understanding of that. Now, people come into the class. Some people are realtors. They have a good understanding of leasing uh, and marketing. Some people are contractors, so they already have a good understanding of construction. And that's cool, but 
you need to learn the other five or six that you don't know. So that's what we go through. Everyone get a picture of this? <laughs> By the way, all this stuff, yeah. Yep, I knew I missed one, that's why I had. All of this is at uh, gojumpstart.org. Our full uh, training workbook is there, all open source. It's all for you. Print it out, look at it, memorize it. You don't have to go through Jumpstart now. Um, developers Network is really like this. This is our Developers Network. We meet four times a year. Uh, we have 1,600 people that are members of our Facebook page. Why? Because they're sharing resources every day. How many people are part of uh, Jumpstart Facebook page? Okay, cool. If you take a look at it, it's pretty cool because people are, hey, does anyone have a roofer? Hey, does, uh, I have a tenant I can't use. Anyone can find her an apartment? You know, just sharing resources. Uh, I'm not saying give up your only tenant. I'm saying, you know, think about other people because they're going to think about you eventually. Um, so we meet four times a year. We have guest speakers. Last year, uh, last year, last week, we had Governor Wolf and Congressman Dwight Evans. That was pretty cool. We had over 300 people there. Uh, we did have Mark Blatstein, and you guys are in for a treat on Friday because he is a trip. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he went into everything from his first property, which is a great story, to marrying for love and not for money. You know, like, he doesn't miss anything. Um, but if I could just plant a question, ask him about his biggest mistake. Okay? Okay. Um, we've had Alan Dom and Derek Green speak. Uh, we had uh, Eagles player Brandon Baer. Uh, he, he gave a great talk on tackling your fears. It was really good. It was sort of how to get over that risk thing. Uh, unfortunately, the Eagles cut him the next day. <laughs> so we will probably never have another Eagles player speak at, at, at one of the <laughs> um, This is the most powerful part of Jumpstart Germantown, the loan program. Because you can have, you can network, you know, and some people network and network. Uh, you can get the experience, at least in the classroom, which is not enough. And by the way, and I tell people who are graduating from the training program, you're going to come out after 10 hours and feel like, what did I just learn? Because 10 hours is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of what you need to know in real estate development. And that is why we give you a mentor to help you through your first, second, third property. Uh, exactly for that reason. So don't feel like, oh man, I came out of my 10 hours or I went to networking meetings and I still don't know enough. I don't know enough to get started. Yeah, of course you don't, you know? Because it's a lifetime of learning. Uh, so the loan program, uh, the objectives, we're providing loans that banks won't approve. How do I know this? I was on the board and the loan committee of Valley Green Bank for eight years. We were a community bank and we didn't want to do these kind of loans. What do I mean by that? We're doing acquisition and construction loans that are messy. They have draw requests. Banks don't like to do that stuff. Two, we're providing loans to newbie developers. Banks definitely don't like that stuff. They, they want to see that you've done five, ten projects. Uh, otherwise, they don't want to get involved. And uh, three is they don't like small loans. It's a lot of transaction costs to acquisition and construction loans, and $100,000 loans just aren't attractive. Uh, the big boy banks, they won't do anything under a million. Uh, Valley Green Bank would absolutely do stuff under a million, but they sort of didn't want to do it unless they knew there was more loans coming. So we, we want to do those loans. We want to do the loans that the banks are not approving. If you can get a, a loan from a bank, please take it. You know, we, don't, we, we don't want to loan you money. Uh, but we're trying to fill that gap that banks aren't doing. Removing the financial barriers for aspiring developers. I know it's hard in the beginning getting loans. Um, we teach you in Jumpstart, by the way, how to talk to a banker. Sounds kind of stupid. But 
how to put your packet together so you walk into the bank and you already have your information together. You look so professional <coughs> compared to other people if you do that. So we talk about that stuff. Um, and then focus residential development on the Germantown area. That's what we've been able to do. If you go to phillyofficeretail.com uh, and click on Jumpstart Germantown, go to the loan program, you'll see a map there that shows you our boundaries. Uh, it roughly goes Broad Street, Wissickon Avenue, Erie, I'm going out of order, Cheltenham, so it covers Mount Airy, West Oak Lane, Germantown, Nicetown, that's basically it. Um, so those are the areas, so we're trying to focus development on Germantown. I'll talk about other areas in just a minute. And as I've said, and I think the numbers are actually higher now, because we're approving new loans uh, every week. Um, but we have already uh, put out $8.6 million uh, in the last two and a half years. And why do I say two and a half years? Because we didn't start the loan program until six months after the training program. We wanted to make sure this thing was going to work first. Um, beyond Germantown. So we were fortunate to get a nice size grant from the Barra Foundation um, because, and they sought us out. We weren't looking for money, but they said, we love what you're doing. How can we do this in other neighborhoods? Well, they're the ones that, I wish I had a copy with me. They're the ones that help us put our workbook together. They help us put a how-to guide together in how to start a Jumpstart program in other neighborhoods. Uh, we have Robin Miller with us, uh, who is starting uh, a Jumpstart North Philly West, uh, which is very exciting. She's one of five new Jumpstart programs. Uh, we have a Jumpstart Kensington that started last year. Uh, and last month, a Jumpstart Southwest Philly, Jumpstart Promise Zone in West Philly, and a Jumpstart Hunting Park. And we're getting interest from not just around the city, but also around the state and around the country, which is pretty cool. Um, so I would say in the next year, we'll probably see another five or 10 Jumpstart programs. But it's been made possible because we have this cool how-to guide, which again, same website, gojumpstart.org. You can print it out, you can take a look at it, see if a Jumpstart's good for your neighborhood. We were talking earlier about starting another Jumpstart program. Um, so take a look at that. Uh, the, those three neighborhoods got seed money from LISC uh, to start their programs. Uh, last month, like I said, Promise Zone and Southwest CDC started their own training program. Southwest CDC had 28 people in their first training program, uh, which is pretty cool stuff, and they all graduated. Um, that's it. So happy to answer any questions that you have, um, and thanks for listening. That's scary. By the way, this is not my property. Okay, I felt a little guilty. Uh, this belongs to Jordan, who did get a Jumpstart loan. Uh, Jordan Parisi. Uh, and anyway, so he did a very cool uh, project there. But go ahead. Good, Good evening, Ken. Uh, great information. Thank you so kindly. Uh, my question is, there are a number of other commercial sized properties in the Germantown area. For example, Germantown High School, Fulton School, uh, the YW, the YWCA, and the... Uh, I'm trying to ruin my day. <laughs> townhouse building. Townhouse building. Right what was there, the last one? The town hall building. Town hall, right. yeah. Now, what's happening with that? Yeah, so the question is about other large uh, properties that are vacant, deteriorated in Germantown. You know, we're working as quickly as we can, but we can't get our hands on everything, unfortunately. Looking back, maybe I should have bought Fulton in Germantown High School. I had the opportunity to buy it for $1.2 million, and uh, it, was, it was a bad cash flow time for me, so I didn't do it. Um, and now someone bought it and they're going to sit on it. So I missed my opportunity. Maybe I'll get it again. Um, but, you know, you'll learn in real estate, you can't look back. You can't, oh man, what if? No! <laughs> Don't do that, okay? Because you can dwell on that and it'll take all your energy. So anyway, I missed those. The YWCA, I, 
uh, bid on it twice, uh, did not get it. Uh, hopefully it's still going to be developed. There is a developer that's chosen, so that's a hopeful one. Town Hall is not savable. Uh, and hopefully there's no press in the room, but um, because I don't usually say that publicly, I am not an advocate for knocking buildings down. It's a seven million dollar rehab. It only has 28,000 square feet of rentable space. And if you do the numbers, you do the pro forma, that would satisfy maybe a two million dollar rehab. So someone's got to come up with five million dollars and I don't see government doing that. So I don't see how that's savable. Hopefully someone will prove me wrong. Can I another yeah. um, Now I see you developing commercial properties up and down Germantown Avenue, particularly Wayne Junction. As you develop these properties, what else would you like to see to accompany those? those yeah, well, the, the question is, as I develop commercial properties, uh, and, and the example is Germantown. By the way, we're also in West Philly on 52nd Street, uh, at 56th Street, we're in Upper Darby, we're in Norristown, uh, and we're in Northwest Philly and sprinkling elsewhere, but those are our main areas that we're looking at. Um, what do I hope to, or what, 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 what should a company is? That's part of the reason I started Jumpstart Germantown, because I'm focusing on commercial development, but we need residential development at the same time. They balance each other. You can't have one without the other. People, people always ask me the age-old question, which should come first, right? And you, there's no answer to that. Sometimes residential comes up and then the commercial areas come up. Sometimes the commercial comes up first. In Mount Airy, as an example, residential came up first and then the commercial came later. Um, so my, my hope is that, and I know people are doing it, we gave Jumpstart Germantown people about a one year advance warning that we were going to redo Wayne Junction uh, before we announced it. And so people started to buy up uh, vacant properties, rehab them, there's still much more to be done. So it's certainly not exhausting, but that's my hope. Yeah. You actually kind of gave me this question, but what would you say is your biggest failure? In hindsight, how would you have dealt with that? My biggest mistake? Is that mistake. 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 Not failure. <laughs> yeah, I don't have any failures. So. Uh, my biggest mistake. So, the only property I've ever lost money on, it was a property in Roxborough. It was years ago. Um, it was before Roxborough took off a little bit more. It was a residential property, single family rehab. I didn't keep an eye on my contractor. I paid him ahead. I paid him too much. Um, I wasn't watching the numbers. He wasn't getting the work done. And the next thing I know, I had overpaid him. And I think I didn't lose that much, but $5,000 or something. Um, but that was a big mistake. And it, 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 it's, you know, we talk about this in Jumpstart, how to not just hire the right contractor. And we talk about the, the, the 10 uh, steps of hiring the right contractor. But it's also watching that contractor, because an unwatched contractor will always screw you. And people say to me, oh, you've been in the business 30 years, you don't get screwed by contractors anymore. That is so untrue. <laughs> the second that we turn our backs, we get screwed, absolutely. Now, do I have a good cadre of contractors? Of course. There's people I want to work with over and over again. You treat them well, they treat you well, right? Um, but it never changes because they will screw you the second you turn around. So that's probably my biggest mistake. Thank you. Thanks. I love what you've done in Germantown. Very happy to hear you talk about West Philly. I have a lot of those same feelings. Uh, as a residential developer, so someone doing small multis, we've done things like um, you know organizing the community for trash cleanup day and other things like that. But what other advice do you have? Um, so essentially, we will even in the neighborhood in the area that we're investing in, we're investing kind of in a micro area in a certain number of blocks. I guess how can we track commercial developers or what can we do to try to speed up the process as residential developers? Yeah, that's, that's great. There are a lot of pieces to your question, so thank you. And first to start off with when you're a real estate developer, you can't just worry about your house and nothing else, right? You need to worry 
If you're a community developer, which is what I suggest you should be, you need to worry about the community in addition to your house. And that does mean um, either organizing your own trash pickups, making sure you jump in with neighbors on theirs. Um, we started, for example, a teacher's fund. We give away $25,000 a year to uh, public school teachers in 11 schools. Because again, you can't just care about the building, you gotta care about the community. You can't do everything, you know? But um, you gotta be visible in the community, you gotta be accessible. People know they can come to me, ask questions. You know, I have a nuisance neighbor, what do I do about them? And I'll give them advice, who to call in l and I if necessary. Um, so that sort of thing. So you just, you wanna be, you almost want to be a social worker for the neighborhood that you're working in. Um, starting a Jumpstart program in your neighborhood, you know, because if you just leave it up to chance, you're going to get bad developers coming in in addition to the good developers. I was uh, taking a tour, Juwan and I took a tour yesterday of a good developer built some artist lofts on Old Stenton near Wayne Junction. And he pointed across the street and said, hopefully the owner's not here, but he said this schmuck, you know, did this junk rehab and threw apartments in there. That's what you want to avoid. So how do you do that? Well, you make sure you talk to property owners who might want to sell. Make sure they're funneling their properties through you or good developers instead of Sending, there's no one way to do that. So I know my answer is a little wishy-washy, but you want you want to control the development in your neighborhood. And any way that we can help with the commercial aspects, because I think that's one area that you know is certainly hurting. Call me and tell me what's available. <laughs> <laughs> good developer. <laughs> um, no, find. Uh, I'm not the only good developer, um, so I'm only half kidding. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, find the good developer, and, and if you make contact with a commercial property owner uh, on a vacant, deteriorated property, and they're ready to move on, make sure you put it into the right person's hands. Uh, this again, part of what I'm doing with Jumpstart. I, I don't have the time to go in and do residential development, so I better come up with a group of people that I think will do the right thing and put it into their hands. So try to funnel it and find the right people. And if you don't know who that developer is, I'll suggest a couple people to you in your neighborhood. So, yes? Is there a training program to um, start a jumpstart program in your area? Say that one more time. Is there a training program that, um, you know, you said that there are several people who started one in their area. Is there a training program or you only need to download that manual and then reach out to you and say you want to Yes and yes. Uh, the uh, like I said, Southwest CDC has already had their first training program. So has Promise. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe Robin will be starting one at one point in North Philly West, and I know that Hunting Park will be starting one. Now that being said, if you're not in one of those areas, and or and or you don't want to wait for the Jumpstart Germantown training program, you can go through the 50 page. Um, book by yourself. Of course, you won't get a mentor at the end, uh, but you can learn a lot of what people are learning. No, I'm saying, how can I create one in my area? So I'm, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. from Philly. I'm right outside of Philly, so if I wanted to start one in Delaware County, how can I start a program where anybody can start a program? You're going to go to the how-to guide. Right. That's on the Go Jumpstart. Okay. Read through that. See if the area you're thinking about, the, 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 the how-to guide starts with is my neighborhood ripe for a Jumpstart program? So that's number one question. You know, and, and we give some criteria, and, and then read through that, and if it's something you want to do, then you're going to contact me, or more likely Angie Williamson, who's in my office. Yeah, but thank you. Yes? Uh, you mentioned Germantown. You saw a few things in Germantown that made you want to develop. Why Germantown? Yeah, this is, uh, it sort of gets back to the criteria of why a given neighborhood. Germantown was a stable area. It was block by block. 
It had wonderful architecture, although you shouldn't fall in love with your real estate. Um, it had enough demand, but was not a hot neighborhood. It was not gentrifying. For example, when I, that scenario, when I was living in Fishtown, I could have started to invest in Grad Hospital. It was hot. And I knew I could make money there, but I didn't want anything to do with gentrifying that area, which is now almost fully gentrified. Um, but it was just getting started back then. I know it sounds a little crazy, but it was not my mission um, to gentrify an area. So Germantown was just in a good place at the time. It was a place that felt like I could help them. Um, it was a place where I felt like I could make money. It was, it just, it had the right aspects, and still does. Um, so it was, what you want to avoid, you want to find the middle neighborhoods, in my mind, right? I would skip the hot neighborhoods. Again, I know that sounds crazy. I would also skip the areas that don't have enough demand. Okay, there's less and less of those, which is awesome. There used to be a lot of those back in the late 80s. Like, no, I'm not going to invest there, because if I bought and what does that mean? If I bought and rehabbed, I won't be able to either sell that property or I won't be able to lease that property. And that's the last thing you want. There needs to be a certain level of demand in the neighborhood you choose. Okay, so you want to find that middle neighborhood, which is really a majority of the city. Okay, does that make sense? Other questions? Yes. Yes, you mentioned you had a project on uh, 56th Street. Uh, <coughs> what project is that? Yeah, we own a 44,000 square foot building at 56th and Chestnut Street. It was an old state office building. Uh, we bought it, it was vacant, we renovated it, and we put a bunch of nonprofit tenants in there, and now it's 100% occupied. Again, same, same Burr philosophy, we twice now have gotten more cash out of the property. We actually have it up for sale now, but we've already cashed out the property, so when we sell it, we won't get that much more cash, because uh, we've taken a good bit of money over time. Also, by the way, got the, to brag for a sec, got the best financing I've ever gotten on that property, 3.5%. I uh, got the bottom of, of, of the interest market, which was pretty cool. Yes. Um, you're working on a deal, but you haven't had an opportunity to go through the Jumpstart program. Can you still utilize the services that you got for that? The loan program. You mean. So the question is, if you haven't been through the training program, can you still use the loan program? Absolutely. Um, that being said, if I go out, um, where's Yuri? Yuri, 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 Yuri wanted to. Can I? Can I? Pick on you, Seth. Um, I'm doing a lot of that tonight. Uh, Yuri's great, and I only met him a week ago. I met him at the Governor Wolf event. But Yuri wanted to sit down with me. I don't sit down with people anymore because I'm trying to mentor a lot of people, okay? And, uh, but Yuri has figured out that if he applies for the loan program, uh, he found out that I come out and personally inspect the property and talk to you. Um, <laughs> I, I have a feeling I'm going to show up, there's going to be a chair there. And we're going to have a little sit down. Because I told him well, we don't sit down because I'm walking around your property. So. Um, so anyway, let me get back to the point. And that is if I come out and inspect the property, and even if your numbers are right, if I feel, and it doesn't happen too often, but I feel like you're not ready yet, like you don't have the tools you need to have to be a real estate developer, I may suggest that you have to go through the training program yet. But I'll be honest, I, I think that's only happened a couple times. Um, so I believe that people have what it takes inside of them, and if you've already sourced a property, you're like halfway there. Um, but yeah, absolutely, you don't have to go through training programs. Some of my mentors have taken out loans um, so it's people of all abilities uh, are using the loan program. So uh, one more? Yes. Yes, go ahead. Oh, great, thanks. So your, your project, I believe, was a Montessori school, or I'm sorry, Waldorf School. Uh, Waldorf School. Uh, you were discussing how that it acted as an anchor for the neighborhood. Yes. And I was wondering if you had any thoughts on, for example, the rail park. Something like the rail 
Brown Park that's opening this week, which is already causing gentrification, and now you in a position where you could open something like that for the neighborhood, but in essence, do it in such a way that you've already parceled up the properties around it so you're going to prevent gentrification while giving the community something like that, it would be a loss of leader. Yeah, if I understand the question well enough, in some ways it's too late. You know, the, the, the rail park was announced, people immediately started buying properties around there, uh, it started getting hot. Uh, in some ways, waiting till the rail park is about to open, uh, and I don't know the area really well. Oh, I'm sorry. Got it. Got it. So, yeah, and, and, and thank you. And your question actually goes back to what can you do for your community. I'm a big believer in pocket parts. So my Mount Airy bid, uh, we just raised $250,000, and we're about to do six pocket parts along Germantown Avenue. Um, I put it in the application with the help of Mural Arts last week to the state DCD, uh, for a $250,000 uh, park at the corner of Wayne and Berkeley uh, near Wayne Junction. So yeah, I'm a big believer in that's got to be part of the development process. I'm glad you brought that up because that's another example of what you can do. Um, and I love that. I did a pocket park on Germantown and West Penn Street. Um, so sometimes we just have a little bit of land that you want to add an amenity that you know is going to improve the community, attract people, send a message to the neighborhood that you're trying to do the right thing. Because a lot of people are not going to your real estate developer. You know, you are not going to do right by me and my community. So sometimes you've got to go overboard to send the message that you are a different type of developer. And, and doing a pocket part is a great way to do that. So I'm so excited. We actually have a press conference at our first pocket park in Mount Airy tomorrow, um, which is cool, at the corner of Germantown and Carpenter. Um, and we're doing little uh, libraries at each of the six, and it's just, it makes a neighborhood when you do that kind of stuff. It upgrades a neighborhood. So thank you very much for listening tonight. And I hope you guys have a nice guys so um, a couple of things thank you very much a couple of things before we close out we're going to do tonight a little bit differently than we normally do it I'm going to I've been giving out awards I know I'm all big on recognition I've been giving out awards all week and I have an award that I want to give out tonight and then after I give out this award typically what I normally do is I release the room and then I say members talk and then we stay here till midnight, I don't know, and talk and, and network and do deals together and, and figure out how we can help each other out. And then I say, non-members, come up here, I want to meet you. But we have a room full of non-members. And this is going to be kind of crazy if everyone's talking and you guys come up, it's crazy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give out the award and then I'm going to do my, my little spiel that I do with non-members. And um, why can't I open this? Can you open this for me? Thank you very much. I'm going to do my spiel in front of everybody. Oh, I was just opening from the wrong side. Okay. I'm going to do my spiel in front of everybody, and I won't be super long. And then um, you guys could network, and this is our space. So I don't have to kick you out like I had to kick you out of City Hall earlier today. <laughs> and I'm hopped up on coffee, so <laughs> we can have a good time, and then we can probably all go and grab something to eat. So what I would like to do is um, I want to present an award to a member. And this member is very, 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 very near and dear to me because when we first started the Real Estate League, so I'm gonna tell you guys a little story. We've been around for about a year and a half. And the reason that the Real Estate League started, uh, Better Than Success is traditionally a, a media marketing company. And I decided that I wanna learn real estate. And for those of you who know me, know that when I decide that I wanna learn something, I learn it. I learn it. I, I, I learn stuff. 
So I said, okay, I know I'm going to do really well in this. So, but what I don't want to do is leave my friends and my family behind. So I'm going to like start a club and we'll all learn together. So in our very first meeting, there was literally four of us. My amazing cousin Nina. Um, I don't remember. It was another guy, and then this other person been with us from day one. Go so super hard for us. And I just love this person. I've developed a really good relationship with this person throughout time. So I am going to give, and also, he, he, he was probably one of the first of our original members that he came in as a newbie. He was the first one to pull the trigger on doing a flip. He did a flip, he broke even. I was like, I broke even. <laughs> And then he, he just successfully did his first BRRR um, deal, pulled out his money out. Now he's got cash flow and property with zero money out of his pocket. So I would like to present the Philadelphia Real Estate Investing Stewardship Award to Sean Holloway. Hey! One of my dreams was to get into real estate. And when I met with Nikki on, um, I think it was a book signing where you started something, and there was another real estate guy that came into Philadelphia and tried to get what we got going on here started, uh, I was all in. And so I met up with Nikki, and I said, uh, let's see what we can do here. And we saw what was going on with that guy that was coming into our city and trying to, you know, capitalize off of our city and our community, and we said, nah, he's not getting us the mentorship that we need, and we just started on our own, and we just decided to go do it our way and keep it all together, and our people, and just network amongst each other, and that's one thing about Philadelphia that I didn't like a lot, when I go to other cities, like Atlanta, I really admire Atlanta because they really work together as, you know, people. I'm not into race or anything, but just our people working together and then come here for Philadelphia and it's like, oh, they don't want, one person don't want to see you do good. I'm not that type of person. I thrive off of seeing other people do well. And when we started this together, that's how I looked at it as, you know, everybody doing well and giving one up for everyone. And you gotta take chances in this real estate thing. And it ain't all that easy. And you, you're not gonna be rich overnight, but if it's something that you really wanna do, I think I know for certain to get involved in this group because the people that are being, getting involved in this group, they, they can see and feel the vibe. And you get answers and you get help and you got a lot of mentorship here. And that's all I gotta say. And thank you for the award. Yes. so much, Sean. I really appreciate you and your support and and just going out there and doing what you got to do. By the way, he has a limousine company. He sponsored our chairs. So if you look on the back of your chair or the back of the person in front of you, we put his stickers with his phone number, take a picture, and use his limousine service if you need to. So, okay, I'm going to do a brief little two-minute presentation about our real estate league and what it means to be a member because I know some of you are brand new to us and you have tons and tons of questions like what does it mean so we have these meetings every wednesday night they are free to our members non-members the first time it's free after that is thirty dollars so if you decide that you just want to date us it's thirty dollars <laughs> but obviously you get access to these for free we record all of these meetings we record all these meetings and only make them accessible to members so our members if for instance, Ken came up here and he gave this amazing presentation. He has some slides 
if you forget something, you can go back and watch it. Or there are members that couldn't make it tonight. They don't have to worry about that. They can just log onto the website and watch all of our, our, our lessons. The other thing that our members get outside of these meetings is twice a month, we do one of three things. That is, we'll have a boot camp or a workshop in house. So, Mark is teaching that class on uh, next Saturday, or we'll have someone come in and talk about something really um, intensive with real estate, or just me members, and we'll roll our sleeves up and we'll learn and educate ourselves and ask questions. The other thing that we'll do is we'll do a field day. So, on June 30th, we're going to have a field day. We're going to go out in the field, look at various properties in the various stages of the rehab process that's for members only. And the other thing that we do that is really, really, really important, Ken and I were talking about this before he um, got up here and started speaking, is we really network and commune with each other. So we will do a fun day that is, really doesn't have a real estate topic to it, but we do something fun together. Of course, have, doing something fun is fun, but what people don't realize is you learn faster when you're learning with people that you like and you know. You also get to build a bond and trust that person because you went skiing with them and then you fell and you hit your head. Because <laughs> that's what happened when we went on the ski trip. <laughs> that's not for me, I didn't think I was gonna make it. So, so you get to build that bond, like I know that you're willing to help me and save my life. So when we go and do this deal together, I know that you at least help me out on that deal, right? So it, 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 it sounds really cheesy, but it's really important. The other thing that we do as members is we also have a Real Estate 101 course in our back office. So as soon as you become a member, you instantly get access to not only the hundreds of hours of educational resources that we have based off of our masterminds, but you also get access to that 101 course. The reason that we do that is because a lot of our members, they come in, they know nothing about real estate, but we want you to come in and learn some basic definitions, real estate math, how to tell if a deal is a good deal or a bad deal, so that you can come into your next meeting and be able to have a conversation so you're not completely lost in the sauce. The other thing that we do as a group is we actually do partnership deals together. So we take all the information that we've learned, we pull our money, we start a partnership. It's not like uh, you know, you're investing and I'm controlling everything and you're just gonna make a couple of uh, percentage points off of it. No, everyone in the partnership deal is a partner. For as little as $2,000 and zero of your own credit, you can come in and do the deal. We are on our second cohort, which is going good. <laughs> we are on our second cohort um, in the partnership deal, and you're not gonna make a lot of money off of $2,000. It's not about getting rich off of $2,000, but it's all about getting the experience, right? So you're not putting up $2,000 or $20,000 with some of these other corporations, and you're just putting your money out there and you're getting a bunch of papers and some videos you actually get to participate in the deal, vote on the decision-making process, and see the rehab from start to finish, and you actually get to make a little bit of money off of your money. There's no other program that allows you to do that. Um, the other thing that we do as a group, outside of all those amazing things, is we network together. Again, I cannot stress how important that is. Ken and I were talking, he was saying how he tries to encourage his uh, program participants to network and he even said he's going to try to require them to come over here. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, it's really important. Out of all those things that I said that we do, that part is the most valuable part. When you are doing real estate and you try and do it by yourself, it takes forever to actually learn what you need. You could be looking on YouTube, watching YouTube videos, watching YouTube videos, but when you can actually leverage other people's information, it makes your life so much easier and also decreases the chance that you will make a mistake. You're gonna make a mistake, it just is what it is. It's but fun. it's more fun when you do it with people that you like, right? And you, it, it's easier to make a $200 mistake or a $2,000 mistake than it is to make a $30,000 mistake. So, because we're not gonna let you make a $30,000 mistake. So with that being said, 
your question is, okay, what, is it, what does it look like? What is the finances? So it normally is $247 to sign up and $59 a month. In my opinion, the $247 to sign up is well worth the value when you instantly get access to all of the recordings that we have. That alone is over top, worth the value is there. But if you sign up now during Philly Real Estate Week, it's 75% off and it's $61.75. That's it, that's, that's all it's gonna be this week. That's it. After that, then the price goes back up. So, does anyone have any questions for me about our Real Estate League membership? Yes? <laughs> so, okay, so the tours that people go on, Jabbar always hosts these tours, and the first couple times I couldn't make them, and so I, every time I, I, I couldn't make them, I would hear them, like, oh my God, we had so much fun. I'm like, did you go to Six Flags? What are y'all doing? <laughs> So they really, really do have a, a, um, have a lot of fun, and he takes them out to different properties in the various stages of the rehab process. And people literally get to ask questions, and they get to see what it's like. They go and look at Grandma's house. They go and look at the house that you know is standing on one leg. They go and look at something that's completely rehabbed. So you really get that hands-on experience. You get a lot of your questions answered just by seeing it in the flesh. And so we do that. Um, we do it at least once a quarter, so you really get to have that experience. Um, yes, ma'am. The cohorts, how often will they come about? So as we do them more, they'll come up more frequently. But my rule is for right now, I don't, I don't want to be in the same phase of any two at the same time. So like once we get into this new property and get our uh, contractor in there, then we'll open it up for the next one. And I typically give everybody like a month or two to put their money to the side. And then we get busy. Yes, sir. Do you think it's valuable if people are in an environment where they're around maybe full time investors and people that are in various stages of their investing career, if they're really interested in getting into this and that's beneficial for them? And the second part of my question is. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> the answer to your first question is yes. <laughs> I think it's very important. <laughs> the, se the second question is, so here's the thing. I'm not, so here's the thing. I try not to, I'm not, I try not to provide a high pressure uh, sales environment because here, if someone thinks that $60 a month is too much for this information that I don't necessarily know that this is a great fit for you. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, when you hear those commercials on the radio, that's like, we're looking for investors in your city. And then you go down there and you go to this all day lecture and they give you a little bit of information and guess what they're asking for at the end? $30,000. And they're not giving you a network like this. And this network is valuable for all of you non-members. If you have a question, you're probably a little bit nervous because it's a big room. You probably don't speak every week in front of people like me. I challenge you, just ask one member, just one member, how they feel about this and is it the, is the best whatever they spend per month because we have different members at different levels. Not different levels, but we have different members. Oh, the ones that you're in? Okay. All right. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I didn't even mean it like that. I was, I was just trying to make reference. I didn't even mean it like that. I'm sorry. I'm gonna play that. But yes, Mike, you have a question. He's not a member. I just met him this week. don't have the homie hookup married member. 
All right. Okay. <laughs> I know it's really, really saving. We'll do, we'll do, we'll do, we'll, 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 we'll do two more. We gotta join tonight, though. Only doing that. Gotta join tonight. We'll do two for one, and you gotta be married. Wow. Okay, it has a left time, but you have to join tonight, though. I was thinking like five one get one and a half more. You have to do it tonight. $61.75. $61.75. I had a lot of coffee. Oh, no, for those of you who follow me on social media, I've been doing a whole lot. <laughs> and so, <laughs> this is a lot going on. Who has the who else has a question for me about the league? I don't, I don't need to sign up tonight. How do I sign up tonight? Okay, so you're going to sign up tonight. Okay, so you're how do we sign up tonight? All right, this is what we're going to do. Just real quick, guys, and I'm going to release you. And you don't have to leave. You can enjoy yourselves here. This is how you sign up tonight. There is a card that in your bag that looks like a little phone lockup, or it's on the back of the proof booklet. Hold that booklet up. No, that booklet in the front. Hold that booklet up for me. What's on the back? The, the, oh, that one. Yeah, let me see what's on the back. Okay, on the back, that has a little phone lockup. Go here. To this link and click this link right here. You can sign up. I encourage you to. That's it. That's all you have to do is sign up. If you have a question, seriously, just ask one member. Raise your hand if you're a member. Identify yourself. Nine members. Look at the member that looks most like you. Look at the member that looks most like you that you think you can relate to and go over to that person. Just ask them one question. Just ask them one question and find out and then make sure you sign up. All right, guys, y'all getting restless. It's all good. Um, if you're also looking for financing, talk to this man over here as well, Mark Brown. Please do. And thank you so much, you guys. I hope to see you at one of the three, three of the three events for the rest of the week. Thank you, guys.